something that's been on my mind a lot is how the market's changing. Uh, even even big brands are now doing this. You are seeing a lot of like user generated content or influencer marketing. And what I mean by that is somebody just taking the product, you know, squirting it on their hands and, and doing it in some good lighting. And I like. I can't be mad that companies are doing this because it works, you know. If you're scrolling on Instagram and you see something highly produced, you know, what is your initial reaction? You're going to scroll past it because it looks like an ad. So part of me feels a little bit torn making stuff like this because, you know, is it going to work? Is it actually going to get results for the client? And this could be a combination of people are trained to know what an ad looks like, or it could just be that the video is not that good. So whenever work gets a little slow, I always find myself filming a spec ad. So this time I wanted to try my hands at making a skincare product video. Uh, fashion and beauty is always something that I've been interested in. So I figured this was the perfect time to experiment with making a product video. In this video, I'm gonna talk about my experience doing this and show you guys how I achieve some of these shots and break down the lighting for them. My girlfriend's best friend has a, an awesome skincare line. I hit her up on Instagram and asked her to send me the product and she ended up sending me the entire line. So instantly I was bombarded with decisions on, you know, which product am I gonna shoot? How am I gonna shoot it? Am I gonna shoot one? Am I gonna shoot all of them? So I ended up picking the rose petal toner, which seemed like a good idea because Valentine's Day is coming up so I could kind of make like this rose theme video and incorporate the fact that she actually uses actual roses in the product so after i had that figured out i hopped on to frame set and just decided to watch like every rose theme video there was on there to draw inspiration from when it comes to making product videos there's basically two things that you're definitely going to need and that is a slider and a macro lens and i don't have either of those so i had to figure out how am i going to get these dynamic shots so one thing I did was order some cheap diopters off Amazon. I found this four pack for like 30 bucks and it sends you four different strengths. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I have never used diopters before. So it was definitely a little bit harder than I thought to use these things. Um, the first problem I experienced was that they make your plane of focus razor thin. So because it's razor thin, you need to stop down just to get anything in focus. And because you have to stop down so much, then you have to crank up your lights. So if you aren't working with some really powerful lights, this can be challenging. And then because I didn't have a slider, I had to figure out what's gonna add another dynamic element to these shots. So for some of them, I actually stacked a halo filter on top of the diopter. And what this does is it creates these like circular flares around the lens. And there was really no, you know, artistic inspiration behind this other than I just wanted to experiment and see if I could get something cool doing this. All right, so the first thing I did was film my hero shot. Uh, after watching a bunch of videos on how to shoot product videos, um, if you haven't watched any, Austin Paul has some great ones, and one of the things he always talks about is how you want to shoot your hero shot first. So the first thing I did was grab some fishing line and tied it around the top of the bottle and clamped that to a C-stand, and then held it in front of the lens and spun it and filmed it in slow-mo that way I could get it like rotating in post and for lighting I had a 300D bounced into a V-flat and then on the other side I had um, just a white board that I bought from a craft store and behind it I had a red board that um, I also bought from the craft store for super cheap just to kind of like add like a red background um, to go with the Valentine's Day and Roses theme and this is also like one of the things I just had no idea. I, so you're supposed to shoot the product and then move the product out of the frame and get a clean plate with nothing. That way you can have a really uh, easy time comping this in. And I didn't do that so I had to use the wire removal tool in After Effects which is actually pretty easy to do, but it's really time consuming, especially if you shoot 120 frames per second. So I had to go in there and manually adjust the key points for every single frame. The product ended up looking kind of weird because it was the angle that it was spinning at. So I decided in post to just 
rotate the image 360 degrees, which created the problem that my background wasn't big enough. So I basically just scaled the background behind it like 10 times and then feathered the edges until it created this like seamless backdrop. And you could tell like the wire removal isn't perfect. If you pay attention, there's like a little tiny line that goes around the back of the cap. And then every now and then you can get like a glimpse of it, just, you know, the wire appearing in the background. And it's just because I had never done this before. All right, so after I had my hero shot, I decided to get some macro shots of the product. So what I did was I got um, an acrylic box and filled that up with water. And then I had these dried rose petals and I just sprinkled the dried, ro dried rose petals in there and used a uh, milk frother to create like a little whirlpool. And then just used my 7200 with the diopter on it and kind of just played around with that for a while until I found something that I liked. After I got all the shots of the bottle that I wanted, I decided to get some shots with my girlfriend using the product. So the first one that you'll see here is, um, it's kind of like a silhouette. There's red background and I didn't want her to be fully silhouetted. So I took two tube lights and I had them shining on the background and I turned one of them to kind of bounce into the side of a floppy and then just kind of like wrap around her face a little bit, giving a little bit more of a, a 3D element to the image. Okay, for the next shot, um, I boomed the F22 above my girlfriend and then added another layer of diffusion. And I kind of had it tilted at an angle a little bit, that way you could backlight just ever so slightly. Um, so when she sprayed the rose petal toner in the air, you could get little highlights of it falling onto her. For the shot of her smelling the rose like this, it's pretty much the same thing, but the I had her kind of like step in front of the light and then angle the light a little bit more so it's a little bit more of a backlight. I put a floppy off to her side and kind of just had it bounce into the floppy and then up a little bit. That way you can kind of just wrap around her face ever so slightly. The second row shot I got, I stacked a halo filter on top of the diopter. And then I had the F22 just boomed overhead and just lit it enough to just see the rose a little bit. And then took a 600D and just lit it really bright with backlight. Because whenever you're filming like rain falling or, or water droplets falling, if you want them to appear on camera, they have to be backlit. So I had that all set up and then I would just use this mister and go behind it and just spray the mister up into the air and then film this in 120 frames per second so you can see it falling on it. All right, so after I got all my shots, it was time to put it together. And honestly, this took way more time than it should have because I really didn't go into a plan with this. I just looked up a bunch of cool shots that I wanted to get, went down into my basement and just filmed it and just kind of just hoped I got something cool and then tried to figure out how to make them be cohesive in an edit. And that's the price I pay for not pre-planning. <laughs> Thank you for watching my first attempt at making a product video. I think that product videos are a great way to practice. Um, you could spend all day figuring out how light is going to interact with the bottle and the bottle is not going to get mad at you for not knowing what you're doing. So if you guys have some time, I recommend trying to make one of these for yourself. And thanks again for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next one.